<laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the Lynx Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler, and boy, do we have a show for you today. We've just spent the first half an hour before we even hit the record button trying to get GNOME to work. Because <laughs> I had to switch to GNOME in order for us to actually record video, because OBS is tr- trash. I mean, it's trash. Uh, everything is trash. I'm, and that's going to be the theme of the day. Everything mm-hmm. is trash. Linux is trash. Open source is trash. <laughs> Uh, OBS is trash. Discourse is trash. Uh, everything is trash. It's garbage. Utter garbage. Okay, that's the kind of mood I'm in. It's raining outside. We have gotten like four inches of rain. I'm pretty sure I'm about to float away. <laughs> so yeah, everything's going to be okay. All right, so uh, before we get into my woes, which I thought were over, by the way, uh, Tyler, why don't you tell us what you've been doing this week on Linux? Yeah, um, I've been starting to use VirtualBox um, for the first time in a long time. Like, I just haven't been using VirtualBox in a long time. I'm more the the last time I was having to use like a virtual machine, I was actually like needing to pass in a graphics card, so I was doing the Q Q U Q U Q U E. Yeah, however you said that. Q Q E M U. Like yeah, I know what yeah you're about. that that and and KVM. So like it's been just a long time since I've messed around with VirtualBox, and it was just funny because the I, I don't know for some reason I just remembered VirtualBox being where when you installed like your operating system or you booted off the live you know ISO, you just got um, a, a full like screen thing no it's 800 by 600 all the time i totally forgot about that yeah and you have to so you can either ch- in VirtualBox, you can either change to a different um video driver if you change to, i don't remember which one it is it's the one under the, the default one and that will get yeah. full screen automatically uh, but that's not supported by every distro so if you you boot into mm-hmm. a distro that re- does wayland you're gonna be in a world of hurt um so, so then you always have to log back out and uh Twitch to the default driver. Otherwise, you have to install the the guest editions, right? And those yeah, are always yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so let, let's just put this in perspective for VirtualBox. In order to get that stuff to work, you have to insert what is the equivalent of a DVD. <laughs> That's basically what this is: is you have to mount a DVD to your system in order to get this to work. Like, it's the dumbest. I, okay, so like I can understand that in like Windows because nobody uses the terminal in Windows, but in, in Linux it should just be you know, like sudo apt install whatever. I mean, you can do that, but it's not mm-hmm. the way you're supposed to do it. It's a mess. No. I don't like VirtualBox at all. I've been I've been trying to get Vert Manager to work. I haven't been able to get that to work either. Yeah, um, I don't even know. so Vert um, Vert Manager is isn't that Q Q yeah e? it's it's that yeah. thing yeah yeah. Yep. yeah. It's just a, like a front end to it or whatever. Uh, supposedly it's better, but I got the last time I got it to work, I wasn't impressed with it because, uh, or at least uh, being the noob that I am, I couldn't figure out how to give it more video memory. Like I want it to have at least some video memory, but you can't like actually change that quality or whatever. But maybe you can, and I just couldn't figure it out. I don't know. No, it's been so like I think I did use Vert Manager, but it's been so long since I've actually used it. So I I can't remember almost anything about it. I just know that it it worked a lot a lot better for me when it came to just installing it and it just working. Vir- Virtual Box as soon as it booted up and it's like this tiny screen. I was like, oh crap! How do I how do I get it to like mm-hmm. go back to the full screen? I mean, it was it wasn't complicated at all, but I just wasn't expecting it at first. Yeah, it's just surprising. It feels like, like this what have you day, been up to? Like it feels like in this day and age they could fix that, but you know, uh, you yeah, don't. Yeah. What have I been up to? <laughs> How's oh. life been? <laughs> okay, so. uh Last Thursday, if you'll remember, when we recorded this, I was mm-hmm. having some distro hopping urges, and I had put up a poll and asked the community whether or not what distro I should go to, and Void Linux won. So I installed Linux five times in about 12 hours. Uh, four times of those was Void Linux. The first three times, I got it installed, and it wouldn't get past Grub. Like, I'm no clue why... Uh, nothing I did could, you know, change that. I don't know whether I was installing a, the wrong kernel or something. 
like I've swung the directions from Void, and then I followed directions like the third time. I found a video from one of the YouTube guys, uh, and the, the installs. I mean, it's not a hard install. It's like a Ncurse's installer, you know. So it wasn't like it was difficult or anything. Uh, but I couldn't get past Scrub. The fourth time, I did get past Scrub and got into a TTY, which isn't where I was supposed to be. I should have installed XFCE, but I was like, you know, fine. I'm in a TTY. I can pretty much do anything I want here now. Uh, but it wouldn't let me log in. It wouldn't let me log in as the user that I, who was supposed to have created. It wouldn't let me log in as root. Uh, and I don't know why. I get it, it just kept saying invalid password. Like, and it's I mean it's possible I suppose that I typed the password wrong, but I type my password in so often I don't think so. And it, it asks you to repeat the password, so I wouldn't have made the same mistake twice. I wouldn't think. Actually, four times because you got to do it for root and for your user. So that was weird. So I was like, you know, what? I'm done with Void. I'd, at that point, I would I'd spent like eight hours on it. I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna go back to Arch. I was like, well, you know, what? I, normally I would just you know boot up into Arco or something and choose Arco because that's where I been for ages. I was like, you know, what? fine. I'll just go ahead and do a vanilla Arch install because I haven't done one of those in a long time. And uh, you know, I got it done, and it's in it's. I'm using it and. The first couple of days were shaky. Like, I think every time you install Arch, the first couple of days are shaky because there's always those things that you have to install that you didn't remember to install. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, drivers or, or packages or whatever that you have to do. Uh, and always the first time you try to install like something like Steam and it says, oh, we can't do this because you haven't enabled the 32-bit library. It's like, oh, crap, I <laughs> forgot to do that. You know, it's just those little things that you have to forget. But after a couple days, everything seems to have been working fine. The USB problems that I was having under Arco, those seems to have been gone. Uh, I was on Sunday night. I had some really weird problems with firefox where it was just freezing up the entire system like i don't know what was going on there but i uninstalled firefox and switched to brave uh <laughs> and um i haven't had any of those problems yet, so i'm assuming and hoping that that was a firefox problem uh it's also possible that it was because i was streaming uh, i guess i'll find out sunday night uh <laughs> so <laughs> up until we started the podcast everything i was like oh it's doing okay like it's gonna be fine i'm gonna be able to stick with arch and I was, just, I was just in my DWM install, and then OBS decided it was going to freeze the video for whatever reason. I don't know why. So that's going to have to be something I'm going to have to search for, like a Google search, um, and see if I can fix it. If I can't fix it, I'm going to have to hop again, because I will not. I swear to God to you, Tyler, I will not be <laughs> using GNOME again. This is the dumbest thing. Okay, I, I got to rant. Screw the main topic. Let's talk about GNOME. Because <laughs> I want to yeah, talk about GNOME. Please do. So, like, why why is it that you, like, really hate GNOME? Okay. Like. <laughs> There's so many reasons, man. How do I even start? Okay. Just, just from this experience alone. So, first of all, let's talk about the reason why I'm using GNOME. So, you're like, if you if you hate GNOME so much, why did you even install it? Why didn't you install something like XFCE or KDE, Plasma, whatever? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the reason is, is that for whatever reason, on my hardware, I can't get any other display manager to work other than GDM. Uh, it, Wait, hold I, on. Even, um, shit, what's it called? The one that's WebKit 2 based, um, LightDM? Yeah, LightDM. LightDM doesn't work for? LightDM will boot up into a TTY or a, like, a, like a scrolling roll, wall, wall of text and say, we've started Light Display Manager and that's where it will freeze. Uh, and it happens no matter what distro I'm on. It's really weird. <laughs> it has something to do with this hardware. That's Light DM. Light DM has been reliable as I hell know. for me. It used to be that way for me too. I don't. I don't know why it's not anymore for me. It doesn't make any sense. It has. It has to be this hardware because, like I said, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. to the distro. It happened on Ubuntu, or it was one of the Ubuntu's. I think it was um, uh, Zubuntu, or whatever. Something. I don't even remember. It's been ages. Um, it happened in Arco. It happened here on Arch. It's just dumb. So he was like, uh, I've tried SDDM, which is KDE's login manager, right? Or display manager. And that works fine on Arco. It would not work on Arch. I don't know why. I couldn't get it to work. I'm assuming that the reason why is because I installed it and missed a package or a dependency somewhere. It didn't matter. So uh, after installing Arch, like again, I was like, you know, I'm just going to use GNOME because I know uh, GDM works. Like GDM has no problems. Uh, but then I, I was like, I installed my DDF, DWM, uh, using my DWM, DWM script and mm -hmm. logged out and logged back in to DWM and it 
booted me right back out to the display manager. And it did this no. over and over again. <clears throat> I was like, what the hell is going on? Because like, I, I know the script works on Ubuntu. I know it works on Arch. Why the hell is it... Like, I log in, it, the screen goes black, and it goes right back to the login screen. And does it over and over again. So I got on Reddit and asked. And uh, the fine people of Reddit f told me that GDM, by default, when you're using GNOME, uses Wayland. And, of course, DWM does not use Wayland. So you have to go into the GDM settings and, and disable Wayland so that GDM just uses, uh, you know, XOR, XOR. like it should. Um, and then that worked. So that was my experience with the GNOME first. And then right now I'm just looking at this. I mean, I just talked about this before the recording. Workspaces on GNOME are stupid. <laughs> Like, this is the dumbest <laughs> thing in the world. Like, you had, and this isn't the way it used to be. And be prior to, like, GNOME 40, when you had, uh, you had workspaces on both monitors, right? And when you mm -hmm. switched workspaces on one monitor, it would, it would switch it on both monitors, right? Like, that's how it would work. Now, you only have workspaces on one monitor. The other monitor has no workspaces. It just is that one workspace, and you can't mm -hmm. change. Uh, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. I mean... This is 2021 GNOME. Everyone uses multiple monitors that uses Linux. I, 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 can, I mean, I, I bet you if we put up a poll and asked how many there people are, use... And there are some of us that would prefer to have 20 workspaces on each individual yes, monitor. Yes, yes. Like, I, I, I don't even... I, like, it definitely needs more than one, okay? It definitely yeah. needs more than one, okay? I, I don't care how many you have. Like, go back to the, the, the other way that they used to handle workspaces where you, if you change workspaces, it would change it on both monitors. That was dumb, mm -hmm. too. Uh, but at yeah. least you had multiple workspaces on both monitors. This is worse. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you took something that was bad and you made it worse. Like, it's dumb. I don't care how... I don't give a shit about your rounded corners, Gnome. Fix multiple <laughs> monitor support. You're failing. I mean, maybe it's just my install. Maybe there's some setting or something you have to change or something in order to get that. As far as I know, like maybe you can enable um, workspaces on that extra monitor through an extension in GNOME 40. But as far as I know, right now, there's no no way to get it working the way it should. Uh, that's just, that's so dumb. And no, get, GNOME out of the box is uglier than XFC out of the box. I'm just going to put that right out there. Because an XFC is, is really horrendously, like, looks like Windows 98 out of the box. This I mean, I would actually have to disagree with you there. I think XFC is much uglier than GNOME. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get that at all. But the, this add a weight to fame is fugly as hell. And, but... <laughs> But whatever. I don't disagree with that. <laughs> but but whatever. The thing is, Tyler, you can't change it. GNOME says you use this theme or else. <laughs> they don't want you to install GNOME tweaks. Like, you can install GNOME tweaks, but that's kind of like jailbreaking your iPhone. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're not <laughs> supposed to do it. Uh, and, and they don't... The developers don't want you to do it. So, why the hell... I, I mean, I know some people like this add weight the theme. I don't know who they are, but they need mental help of some sort. I think Gardner Bryant is one of those people because yeah, I'm pretty sure he loves everything that Gnome puts out. Um, which, I mean, that's... At least we know those people exist, so at least they're serving someone. Well, they have to be... I, I'm pretty sure those people do exist in like 90... 9% of them work for the Gnome Foundation. They they all seem like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. And the rest of us are like, why are you doing this thing that looks horrible? Like, at least... Okay, Edoita has a dark theme, and it looks good. Like, the, the dark mm -hmm. theme looks good. The icons are still terrible, but the rest, at least the rest yeah. of the, 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 the UI looks good, right? The, this, but this grayish, weird shit... It's not a good look. Yeah, they've they've modernized bad icons. That's what I don't understand. Yeah. Like all they've done with Adweta over the past like ten years is it's just they've already like instead of making better icons, they have literally modernized bad icons that were bad from the beginning. Like okay, so uh, Ubuntu is so attached to that uh, dock along the side, they won't change it, right? So mm -hmm. we know Ubuntu does not like change, but the Ubuntu, the king of not liking change, has switched icons many times. <laughs> like oh, if, at many. least three times over the la over the last ten years, they've changed complete icon packs. The most recent one like two years ago, and their mm -hmm. icons now really good. Yaru really good. is Yaru real, is yeah. 
This is fantastic. So like, so and good. their even their weird mixed theme that comes out default now in in Ubuntu, <laughs> really good. I mean, <laughs> like, like, like Yaru is just it's a fantastic thing, and that mm-hmm. comes coming from Ubuntu who can't do shit in terms of design <laughs> like, yeah. like like their their wallpapers are like staring into the sun <laughs> like oh dude they're no they're so they're so bad so yeah, like, especially like, the last one like yeah, this like, last release like, like, can, can we just stop for a minute and talk about i'm 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 done ubuntu with purple and orange <laughs> okay mm-hmm. it's time for a new color scheme those things are old like i understand it's tradition but let's choose something a little bit different or at least let's tone it in terms of the wallpaper let's tone it down just a tad okay mm-hmm. it's it's okay we you're you're very proud of those colors but we can tone it down just a tad it doesn't have they don't have to go away like they're perfectly fine in terms of colors they go well together but the the wallpapers are horrible uh <laughs> i don't know if you've noticed this but like in pop os compared to um just regular ubuntu i i don't know what it is that pop os has done but they've made the orange accent work much much more like I, i'm much more okay with it than i am in ubuntu like in ubuntu it just it doesn't really fit in like the way that they're trying to like the the, co- the color scheme that they're going for everywhere else it yeah. doesn't really match it, Pop OS has just done a better job of working orange into it. Right. But. Well, the reason why I, why I talked about Ubuntu is because, you know, Ubuntu uses GNOME, but they've at least tried. They, they, it's like they're taking a, a, a rock and squeezing as much water out of it as possible because they've made GNOME usable. Like, like as much many problems as I have with Ubuntu, they've made GNOME usable because that you know what? they include some extensions. They include the, the extension manager. They they inc- include the ability to turn on the dark theme. You know, I mean, even if you can't change mm-hmm. themes out of the box in Ubuntu, which you, I mean, they should just include that in the settings panel. I don't think that'd be a problem. But at least you have the option of turning to the dark theme if you want to. Mm-hmm. And stock GNOME, you you don't have those choices. They don't want you. It, as poor as elementary OS is at allowing change for people, GNOME is actually a hundred times worse because at least elementary has shown a, uh, like elementary has a vision for what they're doing. Right. And Mm -hmm. they have uh, a, like a a mythology towards their design and they've shown willingness over the years to perfect that design. Even if I don't like the design itself, uh, you know, they've shown a, a willingness to not only listen to the community, but, you know, go through and actually move forward and add features and all the stuff to the UI that, you know, people really want. And it's it works, you know, it, I, I, like person, personally, I don't like elementary OS, but it works. Gnome, on the other hand, over the last 10 years, they've gone through and removed features like crazy, like mm-hmm. icons on the desktop, gone. Uh mm-hmm. System tray gone, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, and and that's because GNOME, since the bidding, since they switched to GNOME three, has been the slowest piece of garbage in the world, right? It's, it's been so yep. bad. They've had to gone through and take all this stuff out in order to get GNOME to actually be functional, and now there's no actual, like, like you have no ability to customize this thing at all, and mm-hmm. uh, it they don't want you to. Like, yeah. they, well, I, th- I, I think that's what sets elementary apart from GNOME is there's no facade of you, you can customize this. Like in, in GNOME, like, yeah, you can customize it. No one wants you to. And so you, you sh- like essentially shouldn't be customized. Like you shouldn't be heavily customizing GNOME. And like, cause I mean, if you heavily customize GNOME and you have a problem, no one in the GNOME community is 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 going to feel any sympathy for you because like you should have known you were going to run into problems mm-hmm. on elementary OS. You're not customized like you just you're not going to install GNOME tweaks like that's well, not you, a thing you, because you go into elementary OS knowing exactly what you're getting. Plus, elementary exactly. OS is functional out of the box, right? Mm-hmm. Especially with elementary OS six coming out, they're, they're going to have a dark theme. That's the one thing that I was definitely missing. It's like it's going to be there, Same. and you know now it's going to be perfectly fine. Like, yeah, sure, I'd like to install my own themes or whatever, but that's, uh, you know, that's superfluous. I don't really need that. Uh, yeah. Because the theme that they have is fine. If GNOME is so anti-choice, they should at least choose a theme that's actually okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I don't wait, that is not a good designed theme. It's just, 
it's it's old, it's ugly, uh, and, and like I know there's gonna be like two people down in the comments below that say, well, I like Otawaita, and you're not saying it right. <laughs> like, first of all, <laughs> of course I'm not saying it right because nobody knows how to fucking say it, okay? Yeah. Second of all, it's mm-hmm. ugly and you're wrong. Um, okay. It's it's just not a good thing, but <laughs> yeah. Like, I know, like, okay, so there are more problems wrong with Gnome than just the theme, okay? The theme is what I pick on because that's what you see up front, and I will say this, Gnome has gotten faster than it used to be. I mean, it just mm-hmm. has. And now I'm hearing my voice in the background in my head. For, I'm hearing echoes. That's excellent. <laughs> oh, Linux. Uh, <laughs> um, Hopefully it doesn't come out in the recording. <laughs> oh, I pro- oh, I'm sure. I'm, it definitely is going to. The way this is going, of course it's going to. Uh, <laughs> um, but, so, but, so Gnome has gotten faster. But the reason why it's gone faster is because they've taken out so many features over the years. That, because, of course, it was going to get faster. I mean, they've obviously done other work, too. But the uh, And the reason why it's gotten faster is because Ubuntu switched to using Gnome. And they've gone through and done the work to make it faster. The Gnome Foundation didn't actually put in that work. That came from the Ubuntu people. And I'm not saying that Gnome did no work at all, but if from everything that I've read, mo- Ubuntu is pushing Gnome forward as much as they yeah. can. While the like the Gnome people are the little boy who doesn't want to go to the doctors or whatever, and the parent has to drag them along in the dirt to the car or whatever. They're literally digging their heels in. To every change well, that Ubuntu it, wants to make, Ubuntu is literally the one who's like, "Come on, you need like, but like, because because Gnome's trying to make all of these like minimal, like minimalist style changes, and Ubuntu is the one being like, but hun, remember, no one wants this, okay? Right. So, <laughs> right. What's hilarious is that we we talk about that. Then, I mean, all this stuff was true, like. Gnome three dot three eight or whatever was all this was true, and then all of a sudden Gnome forty. First of all, they changed the number scheme, and then they come out with this nonsense. <laughs> I mean, this is I mean, they were like, you know what? Well, everybody bitches, we don't change, so we're gonna change everything, you know. Uh-huh. But not the things that we should have changed. We're gonna change the things that nobody had a problem with. <laughs> we're gonna make yeah. rounded corners. We're gonna make this really weird. Uh, multitasking thing that we're stealing from elementary OS. Never mind that you didn't do it right. I mean, if you're going to steal it from <laughs> elementary OS, at least do it right. I mean, at least steal the whole damn thing, right? I mean, it's just so f- fucking dumb. We haven't even got to the contact information yet. We've been going I was, for 25 minutes. They're talking about the I was, gnome. Uh, I was literally waiting, and then I was going to be like, just so you know, we're really far in. <laughs> yeah, we haven't gotten to the main topic. I don't even know what the main topic is. You want to know why? Because I can't have the fucking the um, the show notes up in front of me because then I would be worrying things are going to break because it's Gnome. Uh, so the main topic, just just so you're aware, is why is Linux hardware so expensive? Yeah, I don't even know if I want to talk about that anymore because who cares? All right, anyways, let's, <laughs> let's jump first. Before we jump into that, contact information. Let's see if I can do this from the top of my head. Uh, at LinuxCast on Twitter, you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash LinuxCast. You can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash LinuxCast. If you want to follow Tyler, he's zany pretty much everywhere. Links will be in the video description. You can... Uh, email us at email at the linuxcast.com. I did that. Uh, I still haven't done the website thing yet. Uh, and speaking of the website, you can actually go through and uh, follow all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the linuxcast.org. I think that's everything. Oh, and Linux, yeah. youtube.com slash linuxcast. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's the, la- the bottom the one. Oh, one. dude. I, I thought you hit that and then went back up and you hit the other one. <laughs> yeah, I, kinda, I definitely went out of order because I don't remember them. <laughs> I don't remember what order it was. It's definitely... Uh, that was it. But okay, that, so, that was good for memory. Yeah, uh, I, I will thank the patrons at the end that if I remember to do that. Um, okay, so mm-hmm. main topic: Why is Linux? Because uh, we, we we could literally talk about GNOME and bitch about GNOME for the next three hours. We're not going to do mm-hmm. that. It's okay. Uh, I, I, it's off my chest. As soon as the podcast is over, I'm going to be running as fast as my fat ass can go <laughs> to DWM because <laughs> I missed it. Like, okay. Hold on a second. Before we go to the main topic, I got one more thing to say. There, there are many desktop environments on Linux. Okay, there's uh, – see if we can name the main ones. We can, Gnome, KDE, Mate, XFCE, um, Plasma, 
um, L- um bu- LXQT. Budgie, LXQ, LXDs still floating around in some place. Enlightenment. No. You, you know, and that's not even naming the the ten, ten gajillion window managers that are out there, right? Of all those, like I've tried all of them. The one that I hate the most is GNOME. By <laughs> far. It's not even a close contest. Like, there, there's, like, oh, so we forgot about Cinnamon, too. Like, Cinnamon's out there. Cinnamon's <laughs> really good. Like, why the hell isn't GNOME, why didn't Ubuntu choose Cinnamon? Like, I understand you guys don't get on well with the the Linux Mint guys, but seriously, Mint, Cinnamon would have been so much better. Like, every everybody says that Ubuntu's the one, the distro that new users come to. Why didn't you choose the one desktop environment that looks like Windows? Yeah, I was like, about to say, like, I mean, <laughs> like, Mint is, like, I mean, as soon as you hit the Enlightenment desktop, you're like, oh, I'm at least close to home. Yeah. Like, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah, like, cin- like Cinnamon is, is really good. It's like, it's like a mixture between, like, it's a more modern version of Mate and a more modern version of XFC with some of the best features of both. You know what I mean? It's really yeah. good. Uh, you know, so why didn't I want to use that instead of GNOME? <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> GNOME is so bad. It's not. And especially for Windows users, like Linux Mint seems like, it, I would assume for most Windows users, when you come over to Linux Mint, it's it, it's the same type of user experience, but just without any ads or all of the aggressive, like, like uh, essentially on websites, it would just be like overly JavaScripty type crap yeah. everywhere like so it's just it's much cleaner it, it, it's familiar i don't yeah. see why they wouldn't go with it uh, yeah i don't know all right let's, let's go ahead and to do the news okay <laughs> we, have a, we still got to do the news before we get to the main topic we haven't even been there yet um mm-hmm. <laughs> this is gonna be a three-hour show okay um <laughs> news tyler why don't, each week we each select a news topic uh, news link of the week and that this week is no different Tyler why don't you tell us what you got I can't show you on the screen because you know uh, <laughs> so uh, if you're watching the video version of this normally I would go through and show you a browser I'm very worried that if I switch workspaces the video will go away so I, I, I like, apologize for that you're just I will put the links in the video description as usual so Tyler your link of the week um, mine was just, uh, it's titled the 13 most interesting changes of Linux 5.13. And so, um, it's pretty interesting. Um, so there's definitely new, um, like there's the initial support for, uh, the M1 chip, uh, that's in the kernel. And then also for me, the more important one, uh, for my current hardware is there's a whole bunch of new, uh, the 2020 hardware platforms um, are like the early support has been added for those. Um, So that means hopefully in 5.13, this laptop with a new Radeon like graphics processor will like, or graphics chip will actually be able to switch and function properly. And I can go back to my home on arch and just be happy. But um, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, also, like FreeSync through HDMI without having to have the newer one is or, mm. or having DisplayPort is added. So it's a whole bunch of nice quality of life improvements coming. I'm sure it will break my computer because <laughs> everything else has. <laughs> oh, the, the stupid thing is, is my computer is not old. Like my, and it's not like bleeding edge either. It's like it was built last year. It has the a, a Radeon or. A, has a Ryzen 5 3800X or whatever, and uh, maybe it's Ryzen 7. I don't even know. It's like it's yeah, Ryzen that's 6. Ryzen 7. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say I have a 3800X. It's Ryzen like, 7. It, it, like yeah. it's one of those. It's the it's the 16 core one. It's the it's 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 good. It has and I have a, a RX 580. Like it's yeah, it's an old card, but I mean it works. It should be fine, mm-hmm. and everything breaks. I can't, like like. Yeah, and and also with a 580, the drivers for that are mature as hell. Yeah, like so. uh, there should be no problems. <laughs> like there should be no issues. But I've had, for two weeks now. Like wait, hold no. on. You also don't have any weird fringe parts in there, right? Like, no. uh, the, like the, the, any the, extra cards or anything? No. the The only thing that's a little like shady or whatever is the memory came from like a rando China. You know, no, that, that 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 don't matter one bit. Whatever. I mean, it, 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 and that's just because by the time I got around to that, I was like, I was out of money. I needed some memory, and, and this mm-hmm. was like, hey, you know what? I could spend 
four hundred dollars on thirty two gigabytes of memory, or I could spend two hundred dollars on sixty four gigabytes of memory. I'm like, oh, this is this this math is good. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Man, so, RAM prices are horrible now. I know. Yeah. Oh, and this was like a year and a half ago. This was like at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, so they Oof. weren't nearly as bad as they are now. Um, yeah. So, all right. So, if I remember right, my my um, link for this week was Windows 11 is, has been announced. And you know, I know what you're thinking. This is a Linux podcast. Why are we talking about Linux Windows 11? And the reason why I want to talk about it is because is it just me or does this look like KDE with some rounded corners? Um, I mean, <laughs> no. It's even worse than that. So have you seen anyone review or check it out? I've watched a little bit of it, but I can't really get past it. Like, I, I watched the, like, The Verge does, like, that, those supercut things of the announcement or whatever. I watched that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I will admit their multi-monitor support where they, like, unplug a monitor and then you plug it back in and it remembers everything that was on the screen beforehand. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I yeah. want that, okay? But mm -hmm. I could do without the whole Windows thing. <laughs> oh, there's there's a whole bunch about it that is just jank as hell. Like, um, for one, you you essentially are gonna have to use a Microsoft account uh, because stupid features will will not work. Like, so now they've moved the Windows button to the center with a. They've also separated the the like search out to us uh, to a separate button next to it, which makes no effing sense because just like in Windows 10, if you click the windows button or actually for that matter any windows when you click the start button and you just start typing it's going to start it's going to immediately switch over to the search button anyway mm -hmm. so there's no reason in separating it out um but you to, to be able to move it back over to the left of your screen like on the bar if you want to do that you have to be signed in with a microsoft account to be able to do that okay <laughs> and the, from what i read the only way you can sign in without a microsoft account is to disconnect your internet before you install it and then i i think i think i was watching god what youtube channel was i watching when they installed it like when they had it it was before the announcement i think it was it was one of the links guys or maybe it was mudahar i don't know but the the beginning the beginning install thing before you get to the, like after the install but before like where you have to choose your language or whatever they went through and, and pointed out like the the one screen where you have to choose the language has like Windows Vista bar, Windows 98 scroll bar, the drop down is like from Windows 8 or whatever. Like, like a mixture of paradigms or whatever. It was like, what the hell are you doing, Microsoft? Well, I mean, also when you get into the actual, again, this is early like leak anyway, so I'm sure there will be changes, but still the file browser is the same as it is in Windows 10. There's absolutely no changes to it. And that's my biggest complaint like with the UI when it comes to Windows 10 is their file browser is it's not like it looks horrible all around. It's just that UI elements just don't match whatsoever. And we're talking about a corporation here who pays enough people like enough money to get UI right. So I don't understand it. I don't know if those people are getting paid for because, I, <laughs> all right, <laughs> from the things that I've watched, like if you delve deep enough into the the, the operating system, you could still discover things like you know Sys Manager or you know all these like things that have been around in Windows forever that still look like they came from Windows ninety five. Mm -hmm. Like they they still have the same design ever. The only thing that they changed was they added some round corners. <laughs> like like that. Windows 11 is like a fence that has been painted multiple times, and they didn't actually go through and scrape the old paint off. They just painted over the old paint over and over again. So you got multiple years of paint showing through. Like you can <laughs> see, you can see the original. You got some of the ones that are on top of that. Windows Vista and eight and ten and all that stuff. Like okay. Like, we know that the reason why Microsoft does this, the reason why they keep all this legacy stuff around is because, you know, they make their money from corporations who don't want to change. They still use Internet Explorer 11 or whatever, and or Internet Explorer 6, and they have all these, you know, plugins for that browser that they just can't pay anybody to rewrite. So, uh, you know, that's where, that's the reason why Microsoft can't say you want screw it we're starting over like they tried they mm -hmm. tried or whatever like th there was rumors that they were gonna like they were completely scrapping things and it just didn't with longhorn whatever it was called and um 
you know, they couldn't do it. Like they, they, they just they they, mm-hmm. they couldn't do it. Uh, they have too many people that were relying on this old stuff. Um, yep. Well, support well, is for, for them. Support is everything. Yeah. And so if you want to it, if it needs to support everything the way it always has, I mean, you got to keep all that old shit in there. You just, right. Well, and then they can't. You, you piss off the corporations that use your product. They're the only ones that pay for your product. <laughs> like everybody else gets yeah, that shit for yeah. free. <laughs> you know? uh-huh. So, yeah. um, which is, honestly, of all the things that they announced for Windows 11, the thing that surprised me most is that they're not charging for it. I thought mm-hmm. for sure that they were going to charge like one hundred and twenty dollars for an upgrade because that's what they. I mean, yes, they well they gave Windows 10 away for free, but it was only mm-hmm. supposed to be for a certain amount of time. A lot of people still pay for Windows 10 licenses. Um, well, see, here's the thing, I. To be honest, I think it would be like a PR nightmare for them to actually charge for it because charging for Windows 11 and calling Windows 11 a major update mm-hmm. or a major release would be literally an offense to every major release by any software ever because it's literally all it is is just a UI improvement. That's it. Um well, as as far as I can tell, like uh, Linus Tech Tips did a video on it, and uh, I mean, gaming's the the same, like on it. Well, it's because it's just Windows Ten. It's Windows Ten with rounded corners. <laughs> exactly. There's and, 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 and a and a centered start menu that people are going to automatically the first thing they do switch it back over to where it's always been. Um, mm-hmm. This the link that I put in the show notes is from a guy named Therod, and he covers Windows for a living. That's what he does. Uh, and, and I talked about this I think last last week. Uh, the comments on the the leak or whatever were hilarious. Like the, like ninety percent were like, "Oh, can we move the start button back to where it was?" And we're like, "Yes, yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can." <laughs> like, like everybody's going to do that. Like personally, I don't care because I don't do menus. It's pronounced window mm-hmm. managers, bitches. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, that's what, like, like, like I don't need this. Um, but most people like use. The, the funny thing is, the only person in my family that uses Windows still that I haven't been able to switch to Linux is my mother. And she still uses Windows. And she's like the most averse to, to change ever, which is, you know, fine. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I could get her to switch to Linux if the file picker in Linux was good. Um, but the file picker <laughs> in Linux is terrible because every single application uses a different file picker. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's so dumb. Uh, Linux, we need to fix that. Uh, and we can get my mom losing Linux. Like, um, mm-hmm. But I guarantee the minute windows 11 decides to install itself because you know you're not going to get a choice right yeah, like it's going to install mm-hmm. itself eventually uh i i get she's gonna she's gonna call me and say that i need to ch- i need you to change the the position of the, the th- i can't find the start menu where's the start menu <laughs> like my it's in the mm-hmm. center now <laughs> yeah. like we had to pay for this nonsense you have to use, get used to it <laughs> well i mean there's there's also going to be so many people out there who are not the type of people to research into stuff and they're they, they're gonna have to spend extra time like going down and clicking on the search button to search things when it works the same way like that, that that's the one uh the one change where i was like what in the why mm-hmm. like what what purpose does that serve well they did get rid of cortana so that is a win i think um mm-hmm. i still don't understand the whole rounded corners thing but then i don't understand rounded corners in gnome so that's uh, that's just my thing. Like it, uh, like I got tried. You know, I, I installed the Pycom version that uh, allows you to do rounded corners. I had that enabled for about ten seconds. <laughs> like, really? Like, you didn't like it? No, I, I it slowed my system down like way too much. And like this ah. is like a top end system. Like I don't understand why shit slow. Nothing should slow it down. But yeah. rounding, it, it did not like rounded corners at all. Um. It's possible that it was something to do with DWM. Maybe DWM just doesn't like rounded corners. That's possible. Um, I I have a feeling that probably Suckless is not taking into account that people are want rounded corners. Like, you know, <laughs> we're Suckless. We don't need rounded corners. <laughs> like, exactly. Uh, like, why would you have so much bloat on your system? Mm-hmm. <laughs> rounded corners is yeah. definitely bloat. All right, let's. <laughs> uh, uh, Forty-one minutes in. <laughs> Let's get to the main topic. God, oh, this is horrible. If you're still watching at this point, thank you very much for for watching. Uh-huh. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because if you like this nonsense, we got way more where this came from. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so the main topic this week was mine. Why is Linux hardware so expensive? Now, 
probably five months ago or something when Martin was still around. Martin and I did a topic about System 76. And uh, so th this is going to be fairly familiar, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about Linux hardware and why it's so expensive. Because there are many actually reasons why. Uh, I think System 76 takes their, their expense a little bit too far in terms of, like, you know, adding too much of a premium on it. But mm -hmm. that's just my opinion. But I think I, I, I got to ask the question, like, why is Linux hardware so expensive? And my answer to this is it's all about the ability to order a ton of stuff. Uh, like, there's a reason why Walmart is, or at least at one point, Walmart was cheaper than, like, your mom and pop store. You know, mm -hmm. because Walmart can order stuff in bulk and your mom and pop store can't. It's basically the same principle here. Uh, these guys usually, like, a lot... A lot of the like the boutique computer builders, or whatever they build, they buy their parts just the same as you do. They probably go to Best Buy to buy them. So that's mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of that stuff is so expensive. Um, but the real question I have is, why is there such a divide between um, where hardware is available? So like, there are a ton of Linux hardware vendors that are available in like Europe. And like there's Enterware and there's you know several, several different ones. If you come here to the United States, the land of free and plenty, um, we have System Seventy Six, and you know, like we have and we do have purism and stuff, but right. purism purism is essentially just as expensive as System Seventy Six. Yeah, they're and, not cheap. Like we have Dell too, but if you want to try to find it, the the Ubuntu based <laughs> Dells, good luck. They they bury that shit. Like nobody wants them to find it. Like um so. Uh, basically, we have like one or two, man. We have one or two, but it feels like Europe has all these, and they all have like really cool stuff. And uh, we can't buy it over here. Like we can import it or whatever, but you're gonna be stuck with like the um, European keyboard or whatever, and it's not great. Um, maybe it's just the American in me. Like I'm feeling left out. Europe, where's all my shit? <laughs> Give me my stuff. This is a, we're America. We're supposed to have it all. Hey, yeehaw! You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's what I that's my question. Like, what, why is it? Maybe is it because Ubuntu is based in the UK that they have all the cool hardware over there? Well, I think it has to do a lot with like um, when it comes to being based in another country and coming over here. I think it takes a lot of infrastructure and a lot of money to be able to mm. get around the crazy import taxes and all that stuff. So. Um, I, I guess really the question is, is why isn't there more of those type of companies that are elsewhere here in America too? Why are there so few Linux vendors based here in America? Like there are like, if you, if we spent 25 minutes just trying to think of Linux hardware vendors here in America, we maybe would come up with five. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't think we get to five. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so the, it's a good question because the, the cynic in me is going to point to the fact that maybe we, I mean, it's just, I mean, we put free in the damn song. We, it, the, one of the, the last words of the song that we sing at every ball game has the word free is in the song, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't like free and open source software and hardware. Like, like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It seems like. I mean, are are the Europeans more freedom loving people than America? I mean, come on. If if that's true, we've lost the plot. You know, because mm -hmm. America is supposed to be the best at everything. <laughs> that's going to be something <laughs> most American thing ever said. But I mean, uh, I mean, stereotypical American here. Uh, America is mm. the best. We should have it all. But that doesn't seem to be. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's just dumb, right? But. It, but just, th then again, how do we get to the point where we do have more hardware? Like what's, yeah, why, why is it, is it may, maybe hardware prices have something to do? Like maybe in Europe you can get the hardware needed just cheaper. Yeah, like I, it's just, I, I, I don't know. Or maybe it's a thing of interest. Cause I, I don't have any statistics to back this up. This is just a feeling. So, Take it with a grain of salt. It just feels like places outside of America like Linux better. Like they are more attracted to the way Linux works than people here in the United States. Like 
maybe it's because we Americans are so used to the corporation slash capitalist model that we don't mind uh, being spied on by Google and Apple and Facebook or whatever, and all the hardware vendors are in cahoots with all those companies or whatever, and we just don't mind it because capitalism, yeehaw, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And in Europe or whatever, maybe they're not so capitalist. I don't know if, I mean, it, it's hard to put it, because, I mean, it just, like I said, I have no st statistics to back it up, but it just feels like here in the United States, in, we don't like Linux nearly as much as, I mean, because if you think about it, I mean, we have, like, Linux user groups here in the United States. Like, we have conferences and stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. and again, this is complete and utter feelings on my part, but have you noticed where those Linux conferences usually are? They're usually on the West Coast, right? Mm -hmm. And where do you hear more about the liberalism and stuff like that? You hear it on the West Coast, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are... Uh, Linux groups in the on the East Coast in the middle or whatever. I'm sure they are. That, but oh, whenever, yeah. when, whenever you hear about like the Linux Linux conference Southwest or you know um, the Northeast one that happens in like Chicago or whatever, uh, those are the those are the famous ones, right? Right? You don't hear mm -hmm. about anything on the like. So I mean, it, it just feels like there's some kind of psychological thing about you know us here in America that just don't like Linux in certain parts of the country? I don't know. I mean, I, maybe, maybe that's just me. I, I think it might be more of just uh, the overabundance, like here in America. Like, it's so easy to get a uh, system just to, like, if you're not into computers, it's, it's so easy to get a system and for for a reasonable price um that i feel like most people just end up getting a computer with windows and that's just they use what what's on it and it's just because it's so easy to get a well i mean even then that argument doesn't really work because i mean anywhere you're going to be getting a computer with essentially windows on it no matter where well, you buy it i mean yeah but the, the thing is is people in europe and other places like that apparently have somehow somewhere along the line learned to question and stand up against the major corporate corporate entities that run you know the world or whatever and um, like i said again complete fail feelings on this part but it just it, for whatever reason there's that mentality that you know what i'm going to switch to linux and now obviously the vast majority of people in europe still use windows too i mean <laughs> i mean that's just the way it is but Go out there and find me some Linux podcasts, okay? And every single po Linux podcast out there, I mean, the vast majority of them, listen to the accents. They're all mm -hmm. British or Irish, you know? They're, like, they, they're, they're all like that. They, none of them sound like yee-haw. They all, they all <laughs> sound like James Bond, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you know so uh -huh. Maybe that's where my feelings of uh, Americans don't like Linux comes from. Uh, but... It just, that's the way it feels to me. Like, n okay, here, here's here's another thing. If on Linux YouTubers, we can name like what, maybe four or five guys out there that are American. The rest of them mm -hmm. are, you know, are outside of America. Um, And, you know, fair enough. But I mean, first of all, one of them is Brian Lunduke. We can just... I mean, that man lost his mm -hmm. color ages ago. Um, <laughs> um, so, I mean, it just, like I said, the predominant feeling I have is just that you, they like Linux more. And the question is, why isn't Linux more prevalent here? Like, we have movements here. Like, we like to protest, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. one of the things that Americans like to do is, like, we do protests really, really well. We do it better than anybody else in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> well, I mean, but also if you think about it here in America, we are not very um, – Americans have a very big – problem with things that come across as socialist in nature mm -hmm. and free software could pe there are people out there who take free software as if it's a socialist movement and 
I feel like that's maybe why there's a stigma here in America against Linux being really popular or even socially like not just it because it's very weird like when, right. when 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 people hear that you're using linux they're like huh what why like and i feel like a lot of people don't get interested in because there are those fanatics out there who are like free software is essentially socialism and yeah. we got to push both forward well I mean, then one of the i mean if you talk to like the premier linux evangelists out there what's the number one thing that they tell you why linux is better than windows and the answer to that question is that linux doesn't spy on you right linux doesn't change share your information and here in america that's not necessarily a good thing because the way we tend to look at it i mean i'm not talking about everybody but a lot of people tend to look at it uh i have got nothing to hide so why do i care if microsoft spies on me you know and mm-hmm. that's the way a lot of people look but back after the 911 attacks and all that stuff and we had uh like the NSA spying on us like there was a good portion of America like I'm not I don't do anything wrong why does it matter if the government spies mm-hmm. on me uh no yeah. I mean well I mean and there's also there's like people complain and use like usability um or um ease of use or just like features as a reason of say like things are bad and they're trying to cover up spying on you. But I actually had to essentially un de Google my phone for a little bit because my car died on me and I needed my buddy to pick me up and I had to send him my location because I I live out in the middle of nowhere. So like he just needed my location to be able to find me. And so I had to de Google my phone because I like, I'm not going to be able to send him a, um, like a map location exactly where I am and him reliably find me there. He needs navigation. So like, I don't know. There are real reasons to not necessarily have someone spying on you, but you know, have well, your data being used. Right. Well, okay. So we all know that Google is convenient as fuck, right? I mean, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. Like, I think we both use Android, like, and you know, the features on here they're really cool right i mean it's like, yeah, yeah it's awesome like um like i know this phone knows everything about me <laughs> like it has all of my information <laughs> and i don't care because the features are really good you know and, and mm-hmm. i think that that's the the way a lot of people look at it like why would i switch to a linux phone that can do like 90 percent less than this one uh mm-hmm. and cost just as much probably um, yeah. And the only pro there is that it respects me. Right. Yeah. That like, I mean, we, I mean, we've gone all over the place in this main topic. We we're talking, we were talking <laughs> about prices, but I mean, that's a boring topic. We we, we got into privacy, and so like uh, like we've gone all over. Like Americans don't. I mean, maybe uh, Americans don't value their privacy nearly as much as like. Uh, we don't have like like the EU always puts in a whole bunch of like laws like the, they get the GDPR and they all this stuff the way they try to protect their citizens' privacy or whatever. You never see any of that kind of stuff go through here, not really. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the biggest technological like legislation we have tried to do is try to make it so that um, the social media companies don't pick on the politicians. You know, <laughs> you know that's, that's <laughs> the only thing that really matters to 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 the Congress here. Um, so yeah, um, there, it it seems to me from just our conversation here that there are many reasons why it's possible that Americans don't care about Linux nearly as much as Europeans. Um, And I think that contributes to why hardware is so expensive because I mean, if we had like, for one, if, if being a global like company and being able to ship globally was cheaper, then I feel like Linux hardware, no matter what, would just be cheaper. But it, it's hard to be a American-based corporation when essentially you're just going to be selling to the American people. And Linux is just, it's not, it's not, it's not that it's not just popular here, but there is for quite a few people out there a stigma around it where they they tie it to socialism. Well, I mean, there's that, and there's we t- as a people tend to um, remember things as they are and don't think that things change. So there's this whole stereotype that Linux is hard to use. If you use Linux, you're going to spend all your time in a command line, and you're going to be searching and praying for something 
to replace your Adobe apps and your Microsoft Office and stuff like that. So uh, there's, I, I mean, we, we, I can't say that that, um, that feeling isn't around in like Europe and stuff like that too, but it feels like part of the reason maybe why here in America we haven't been able to get past that is just because we're too stubborn to, you know, not look at it, you know, it's, yeah. We just have that stereotype, and we're not gonna disbelieve that from for whatever reason. Not when we have, you know, you can go to Best Buy and buy a three hundred dollar Chromebook. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, um, and you also gotta think about this. We we also are the type of people where we're very distrustful. Like, I mean, even though we're okay with our gov, I mean, we're not we're not always very excited about our government most people aren't ever excited about the government but like we're we're always distrustful of just things in general and especially like i I don't know about everywhere in america but i know down here in the south it's uh, like everyone has a saying of like there's no such thing as free like free does not exist yeah and so when you have something that is truly 100 percent free it 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 comes across to most people as a honeypot so they're not even going to yeah. check it out what, what, in general. What's, what's the catch? You know, there's got to uh-huh. be a catch, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turns out the catch is that you're going to have to learn how to burn a ISO onto a USB key. That's the catch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Good, good, the good mountain getting, of work that that is. <laughs> good luck getting grandma to do that. All right. Uh, first of all, before we move on to our picks of the week, I would just like to apologize to Tyler and everybody who was in the South because I used the word yeehaw and that might have come across <laughs> as, as offensive to anybody who's in the South because you want know to, I'm from Michigan. We don't say yeehaw here, but that's the way, you know. So, there are, uh, all right. I live in Tennessee. There are people out here that say yeehaw. I do not find that offensive. Do, do you use reckon and yonder down there too, man? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, my, that's my grandfather's favorite statement. I mean, he's reckoning all the time. You know, I'm just, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right y'all let's move on to picks of the week <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good uh, I, 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 I i can do that it, it's much easier to do like a southern accent than it is to do like a british accent because i can't i mean we're not even gonna try i mean they're just no everybody. I, I, I would offend so many people <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you don't want me to do that like, like you'd never be able to watch james bond again because you've lost your rights <laughs> <laughs> to watch James Bond. All right. All right. Move on to the picks of the week. Go ahead and you go first, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Well, so my pick of the week for this week is SideQuest. And it's, um, I, I don't, I'm not sure about SideQuest being like open source, but I know there are some really cool, like, um, uh, there's a, I think there's three or four, but there are some open source um, VR games that you can check out um, on there. And it's uh, just a, great way of taking um, a very proprietary product and um, just giving Facebook the proper middle finger and enjoying the product even more. So I just have to promote SideQuest just in case anyone out there is, you know, um, interested in VR or just recently thought of or purchased a um, Quest um, headset, just so you know. You can sideload um, VR games on there, and um, they're awesome. Um, a lot of them are comp- like there are mo- the majority of the side quest games are free. So um, that's really neat. It's a nice way. I don't. I've never used VR ever. Um, um, it, it is one of those things where it's it sounds like a gimmick. But as soon as you do it for the, as soon as you play it for the first time, it will completely change the way you think about games. Like me and my buddy were playing Pavlov the other day and we were um, sniping and stuff. And I mean, I was, I was literally like rolling around on the ground. I turned my guardian off and cleaned up my room and I was rolling around on my ground trying to like set up a shot and snipe, like (laughs) squatting, like it's really fun. Yeah, but, it sounds it yeah. sounds great. All right, so um, my pick of the week is Brave Search, uh, and mostly because I couldn't figure out anything else to choose. <laughs> um, no, it, it, it's not bad. So 
I have my qualms with DuckDuckGo. Uh, everyone else seems to think that DuckDuckGo is actually pretty good. Uh, every time I make a, a, a negative statement about DuckDuckGo in the com in the comments, I'll get like ten people saying, "Well, yeah, DuckDuckGo is actually pretty good." Uh, I don't know what you're t talking about. The thing is about DuckDuckGo is like eighty percent of the time when I, I search for something on DuckDuckGo, I have to go back up to the search box and hit G bang in order to get to Google. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I should have just used Google yeah. to begin with. Uh, I don't know if, if it's, if it's because I search for weird things, it's possible. Uh, I don't well, think I everyone's different. And I feel like for, for people who do basic searches or things where they don't, they don't know exactly the type of information or exactly the information they need. DuckDuckGo does work. It does give you relevant search results, mm -hmm. but Google is far, like if you know the information that you need or at least the type of information that you need, Google's going to give it to you first. Yeah. Like that's just, it, it's the power of Google and yeah. being as massive of course. as they are. Uh, so the thing is Brave Search is actually worse than DuckDuckGo. Uh, but I, <laughs> it's, it's in beta. Like, so it's just, it's just literally just started like a few days ago. And I mean, they did an alpha before that and people were using it. Uh, for being in beta, it's actually not bad, but it, it does give you worse results sometimes than DuckDuckGo. The the thing I like about it, though, is that it feels more original than DuckDuckGo. Like, there's always that feeling in the back of your mind when you use DuckDuckGo. Like, you know, this stuff's coming from Bing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to use Bing. If I wanted to use Bing, I'd just use Bing, you know? With, of course. With Brave... They have their own index, right? So they're doing this all stuff all themselves, and it feels like if I'm going to support something, I'll support this because they actually feel like they're doing the work other than just reskinning Bing results. Now, I know that's not all DuckDuckGo does. They have their own stuff too, but it just – again, there's a stigma back there. It just always kind of reminds me they use Bing results. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that being said, I also switched to the Brave browser, and I don't want to get into this because we've already gone over an hour. Uh, but the Brave browser is horrible, man. It's just yeah, so I'm, bad. <laughs> I can't get into it, dude. Like, not e I don't even know how the browser is because it's just so gimmicky. Like, their bat token and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I, I disable uh, all that. Like, you know, the cryptocurrency, whatever. The crypto crypto nonsense, as they say. It, whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'm a guy who likes to very much customize my browser. I was the user Chrome.css guy for Firefox all the time, right? Uh mm -hmm. But you can't do that with browse with Brave, and you know, fine. I can like I can live with that. But there's this thing where every time you download something, like if you right can click and download like an image or whatever, at the bottom there's this like a like a, a bar that pops up. It like takes up a, a quarter of the screen that tells you you downloaded something, like, and you can't turn it off. Like, <laughs> why? Like, like who's designing this nonsense? It's so bad. Um, now apparently it's so big because I have the zoom turned up a little bit because of, you know horrible eyes uh mm -hmm. but still i mean it's so so bad and you can't like i said you can't turn it off and it doesn't go away it just stays there i mean you can close it but then you download something again it comes back again it's so dumb <laughs> and i'm i'm there's an update to firefox uh, like yesterday that i think and i hope fixed the problem that i was having sunday night so if it did i'm switching back to firefox like soon after this podcast like, like there's just there's so many little things that just drive me bonkers about the brave browser i may make a video and about it. I, i've got to do some more looking but as long as i can if the 5.13 kernel is actually out i will be checking it out immediately after this podcast as well like i windows has worked but that's it. Like I, I was talking about it with a buddy. Windows has worked and it gets stuff done, but it is a horrible experience. Hold on a sec. Hold on. Hold on a second. You mean we've done this whole podcast and you've been using Windows and you didn't even. You didn't me? know that? No, you, you didn't, didn't know that? No, I see. You learned from that Mac experience where I made fun of you for the whole freaking time. <laughs> and, and, and you didn't tell me this time because you know how I would have reacted to that nonsense. Oh, I oh. thought you knew. No, yeah. I, I didn't know. But I know now. Now we got to do another hours. We got to do this podcast <laughs> over so I can properly <laughs> make fun of you for using. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, I've been using it for like the past four or five days. Uh, I've just been ha I, I've had to because the um, graphic switching right. is uh, it crashed the computer just every 30, 45 minutes mm -hmm. doing something. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched How I Met Your Mother, but there's a spot where Barney, the guy plays 
uh, Neil Patrick Harris's character. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, remember what the context is, but they got him and his friends got into a fight, and he walks out of the bar. Friendship over. <laughs> Using Windows, friendship over. It's done. All right, that's Can't it for this. No, just no. Go away. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you anymore. Uh, <laughs> using Windows, you don't, don't get that shit on me, okay? I just think I don't I, like. Uh, like you, you might be contagious, okay? I'm just saying. Might spread right. the disease. <laughs> That's horrible. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, before we go, we should take, thank our patrons: Devon, Marcus, Naglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Uh, I have no clue what we're doing next week because I don't have the show notes in front of me. It doesn't matter. We'll do something next week. Um, it's it's Tyler's turn to pick. Make sure you pick one. All mm-hmm. right. Anyways, uh, switch back to the switch thing. There we go. Now we can actually be on screen again. <sighs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. Uh, if you watched all the way to the end, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we really do have more of this nonsense. We do this every mm-hmm. week. Uh, usually on Thursdays, we push back a, a, a time this uh, whatever – this week and also i mean if you made it this long in the podcast you're a trooper yes, good job seriously <laughs> give yourself a pat on the back you made it through all this nonsense i i have no clue what we even talked about i've forgotten about it it feels like we have been... bounced all over <laughs> it, the place we, we, it feels like we've been podcasting for days <laughs> like and then at the very end somebody sprung their not their windows nonsense on me so now i gotta get away from you as quickly as possible all right thanks everybody for watching we'll see you next week See ya.